Hi, it's Melanie. Today we're digging deep into substrates. Let's grow. So far, we've talked a lot about what goes into your plants. Today, we'll take a look at what you're putting your plants into and what role that plays in plant development. We'll start with a few key concepts to understand how plant growth responds to different substrates. How much water does your media hold? It's an important question to ask and the answer could help you avoid damage from overwatering as well as avoid the permanent wilting point. Key points to understand after watering events are saturation, field capacity, and wilting point. Saturation occurs when the duration of irrigation events continues beyond a substrate's water holding capacity. Prolonged and frequent periods of full saturation will devoid the rhizosphere of available oxygen and put excess pressure on the roots. Field capacity is the point at which runoff has ceased and we've reached the substrate's maximum available water level. Evaporation and capillary action draws water out of the growing media while it is accessible. If no watering events occur, then these processes continue until the substrate reaches the wilting point and there is no longer water available for our plants to feed. Throttling that sweet spot between too much and too little will keep your plants happy and healthy. How much oxygen can your media provide your root zone? Another vital question to answer for understanding plant growth. Higher levels of oxygen in your rhizosphere will do the following. Prevent anaerobic bacteria from proliferating, promote root development, help water and nutrient absorption, and facilitate respiration. Particle size in your media will play a big role in how much air your substrate can hold. Small or fine particles will tend towards compacting and have less air porosity. Less frequent waterings are recommended to avoid overwatering. Large particles will contribute to increased drainage and watering intervals should be increased accordingly. Cation exchange capacity, or CEC, refers to a substrate's ability to capture and exchange cations within the rhizosphere. Let's unpack this concept. Nutrients dissolved in solution contain necessary minerals that carry a positive charge called cations. Common cations include calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and potassium, which we've learned are essential for plant growth. The higher a negative charge or the more anions that the media holds means that the substrate is able to hold more of these essential cations for the plant's roots to exchange and absorb. Nutrient solutions applied to substrates with higher cation exchange capacities should generally be mixed at a lower EC level or electric conductivity to avoid over-fertilizing. EC, as we've learned from our previous episode, refers to the concentration of dissolved solids in solution. Now, let's examine some common substrates used in cultivation. It's everywhere. It's what humans first use to domesticate crops. Soil is the most conventional form of growing media, but it can vary widely depending on what's in it. The ratios of inputs will vary a soil's field capacity and air porosity, and as the chart shows, can deeply affect CEC. With the exception of peat moss, most soils will have CECs well above any hydroponic substrate. We recommend using Veg Plus Bloom Dirty for these higher CEC substrates. The Dirty formula contains our highest ratios of carbon-based organic nutrition. Additionally, the rich blend of organics contains compost tea extract that is a viable microbial food source. The dirty formula is also more alkaline than our other base nutrients to allow nutrients to be more bioavailable in these substrates. 
Coco coir is a biodegradable growing media derived from the fibrous material found in the shells of coconuts. It's a renewable resource found in abundance exported mainly from India and Sri Lanka. This substrate has a fuel capacity capable of holding water several times its own weight. Coco's ability to nurture microorganisms and having a measurable amount of CEC while still providing excellent drainage and high air porosity give this substrate hybrid properties of both soil and hydroponic media. Coir naturally contains high potassium and sodium, but low levels of calcium and magnesium. Make sure that your Coco Coir is treated with calcium and magnesium supplements before use to create a buffer Otherwise, toxicities can occur from the imbalance. Use Veg Plus Bloom RO Soft for best results. Stone wool fiber was discovered by observing the effects of strong winds on a volcanic eruption. Today, this inert substrate is widely used as the standard in commercial cultivation. It's produced from melted basalt spun into fiber. The fibrous material is shaped into blocks and has CEC of zero and excellent drainage. These properties are ideal for delivering precise volumes of irrigation and concentrations of solutions via top drip irrigation. Veg Plus Bloom RO Soft is also recommended for this inert substrate. As is the tradition of hydroponics, innovation continues to drive the industry and growers continue to push the limits of how we grow. Nutrient film technique, deep water culture, and aeroponics are among the techniques that growers use successfully with little to no inclusion of a substrate. Medialess farming can mean explosive growth because of the oxygen-rich environment for the roots and nutrition delivered directly to root surfaces. It also means that deviations from ideal nutrient solution conditions can be less forgiving than more conventional growing methods that can use substrates as a buffer to reach appropriate parameters. pH, EC, water temps, and dissolved oxygen levels should be monitored more vigilantly in order to avoid impeding plant growth. We recommend using our Veg Plus Bloom RO Soft formula in medialess systems to provide complete nutrition and increased control of variables. Visit our usage calculator and simply input your growing conditions, including your reservoir size, growing media, and water type to generate our recommended application rates. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of Grower's Notebook. Join us again next time when we look at plant biology and the different processes to consider when caring for our gardens. So like and subscribe and hit that notification button and stay up to date with the latest episodes. And don't forget to leave a comment below about what topics or information you might want us to go over in this series. I'm Melanie and thank you for watching Grower's Notebook. Thank mm -hmm. you.